Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, sort characters by frequency. We're given a string S and we wanna sort it in decreasing order based on the frequency of the characters. And the frequency is of course the number of times a character appears in the input string. So for example, here with the string tree, we see T shows up once, R shows up once, but E shows up twice. So if you were to take these numbers and sort them in decreasing order, you'd get two, one, one. Now there's kind of a tie between these two. And we know even though the numbers are the same, the characters that they represent will not be the same. So we'll have a T here, maybe an R here and an E over here. But this itself is not the final solution because if E shows up twice, we want E to show up twice in the output string. So we need two E's and then a T and an R or two E's and R and T. So that's pretty much the entire problem. I mean, you might not know how to code this up just yet, but we pretty much have solved it. We can now solve this problem on pen and paper pretty easily. So what exactly did I do in each of these steps? Let's sort of dissect it. So the first step was basically to count the occurrences of every single character. We can do that pretty easily with a hash map. So that'll be just big O of N just counting that and putting it in a hash map. Also big O of N memory as well. So what was the next step? We kind of actually skipped a step, at least in the drawing, because this part was so simple, but let's try to dissect it. We had a pretty simple example here, but even this simple example tells us a lot because obviously we want any character that shows up a single time to be grouped together. These should show up next to each other. Now the individual order of those elements doesn't matter, but they should be together. We should not have something like where we have two in the middle and then have a one on the left and then a one on the right. That would not be valid. We want them to be grouped together. So to form that grouping itself, we can use another hash map. Now that we have counted the occurrences of every single character, where like that first map would be taking a character, mapping it to the count. We now want to create another hash map, which is gonna do sort of the opposite. We're gonna take the count and map it to the character, but not just a single character, a list of characters, because that's what our grouping is. In this example, we would have one map to two characters, a list of two characters that are T and are. We'd have another group where two is mapped to just a single character, a list of one character, just the E. But this mapping will also tell us a lot. Just to clarify, this hash map just tells us the grouping. This does not tell us how to order the grouping. So in this hash map, how do we know that the two is the first element? How do we know there isn't a character that shows up three times? We don't know for sure. Well, this is where we can kind of approach it in two different ways. We can take the key set of the hash map, the keys in that case would be the numbers, and then sort that. Now that's gonna be n log n because the max number of keys is not gonna be exactly equal to n. I don't think that's even possible, but it's gonna be proportionate to n. This is a perfectly valid solution, but the time complexity would be n log n. If this problem is starting to look like the algorithm bucket sort to you, that's because it can actually be solved with bucket sort. If you're not familiar with this, I do go over it, I think in my DSA for beginners course. It's not like a super crazy difficult algorithm. I'll show you how we can apply it here. In traditional bucket sort, the trivial version is, let's say we have a number one and we know it shows up, let's say five times. I'm just picking a random number. We also have a number two. It shows up three times. We have a number three. It shows up one time. We can now take this array. And now that we have a mapping, like a number maps to the count, we can take this and sort it. And I guess I can show you like what the original input might've looked like. It would have had five ones, so it could look like this. Let's say we put some twos here. I put a three, then I put a two, and then I put two ones. So in this, we have five ones, three twos, and a single three. And if we took this and we created this array or hash map, we could do that in constant time, and then we can sort the input because we can now go through the keys 
of these buckets in sorted order. We can put one five times by reading this value, then we get to two, put two three times, and then we get to three, put it once. So this is normal bucket sort. The reason it works is because we have this input set. We know it's between one and three. Now that same guarantee is not true here. So this is what our hash map would look like. In this example, it actually does work. We could have created this with an array of size two or a hash map, but it could be possible we might have actually had something that's more sparsely populated. We might have had the key four and we might have had the key 10 and a bunch of other keys and we skip a bunch of keys as well. So it looks at first like it can't work, but can you tell me something about this key set? Is it going to be bounded by anything? Well, of course, it's going to need to be greater than zero. So let's say the key of this hash map is definitely greater than zero. What is it going to be less than? What's the max possible value the key could be? Well, it would have to be the most frequent character. What could the most frequent character be? Like, what could the frequency of it be? Probably the size of the input string, right? Like this. So n is the upper bound. Now, what we can do is be clever. We can iterate over the key set of this hash map in sorted order for i starting at one all the way up until n. So now we have a big O of n time loop, which will allow us to iterate over this hash map. And we might find that some of these keys, some of these candidate keys might not exist in the hash map. That's fine, we'll skip them. But once we get to one that is valid, so for this example, when we get to one, we're gonna then go through each individual character within that list. We're gonna say, okay, T, then we're gonna say R, then we're gonna go to the next list. We found E here, but we know we have to add it twice because the count was two, so then we put E twice. So that's how we would do this. And I just noticed I kind of did it backwards because they wanted us to start with the most frequent character. So when I talked about that loop, let's say we're actually starting at N and then working our way down to zero. Sorry about that. But everything else is correct. The output would just be something like this instead. So this way we can solve the problem O of N time and O of N space. Let's code it up. So the first thing we want to do is count the frequency of each character. We can do that with a hash map just by iterating over every character in S. In Python, you can take a shortcut by creating a counter. Sometimes I don't use the counter because for really, really easy problems, it just feels like cheating. But even if we use it in this case, we're still going to need to iterate over a hash map anyway. So I don't feel like I'm cheating in this case. So this will map every character to the count. Now, we want to put them into buckets. So what I'm gonna do is create another hash map. I'm just gonna call it buckets. If you wanted to, you probably could actually here alternatively declare a list, but you'd have to allocate memory because you'd have to make the list of size N. So you might have to allocate extra memory than you actually end up needing. That's why I am in this case doing a hash map. If you know how hash maps work, if you've taken my DSA for beginners course, even hash maps actually do allocate extra memory as well. So here I'm creating a default dict because I want every frequency to map to a list. So the frequency of a character is going to map to a list of those characters. So next, let's actually iterate over the first hash map so we can populate the second one. So let's say for character count in count.items, this is just a convenient way to get both the key and the value at the same time. With that, we want to say for this bucket with this particular count, let's add this character because the order of those characters doesn't matter as long as they have the same count. Okay, now it's time to build our result. I could build it with a string. So if we wanted to do that, we would do it like this for I in range in reverse order, remember? So we're starting with the largest length and then working our way down to zero, but not including zero because there probably isn't a single character that occurs zero times. If it did, we wouldn't have added it here in the first place. And we want to decrement by one each time. Basically we're going in reverse order. So now we have a bucket with this. So for the bucket with this count, we wanna go through every character in that bucket. So for C in this, I could say result add to this string the character, but we want this character to occur this many times. So in Python, you can actually take a character or a string and multiply it by a number, which will do pretty much what you would expect. So if this is two, it'll duplicate this string twice and like concatenate it. And then with that, we're gonna add it to the result. 
and then we could out here return the result. The way string manipulation works, strings are actually immutable. So every time we do this, we're actually creating a brand new string, which is technically inefficient, even though when you actually run the code, it doesn't make that much of a difference. So a slightly better way to do this in Python is to actually make this a list. And then here we can, instead of adding to the string, which would basically create a new string, we can append to this list. And after appending, we don't want to return a list, of course, we want to return a string. So to do that, we can join all of the strings together. And that is generally more efficient. So we can do this. We want to join all the strings in this list and the delimiter between them is going to be an empty string. Basically, we just want to concatenate all of them together. So that's the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. As you can see, it does. And it is pretty efficient, at least in terms of big O time complexity. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.